So it's time for the 2023 year in review, my favorite and least favorite gear, what I think of the videos I did. And since the last time I did this, I've done this every year since I've had the channel. And today I want to talk about the co-sponsor. We're co-sponsoring this today with Stu Mac. How it works is click the link down below and you sign up for Stu Max. You get 50% off and Stu Max is a deal where you get free shipping even to Europe and you get 10% off your orders plus some exclusive other discounts. It really does pay for itself. If you guys know Stu Mac, shipping is very expensive. So if you click the link down below and you sign up for that, a percentage of what you spend will be kicked back to the channel because I know not everyone is in the mood for spending or maybe you don't don't need any illusory tools right now we're doing a giveaway as well and so if you go to www.knowyourgearpodcast.com you can enter to win a set of my black stock pickups so there you go it doesn't cost you anything that was just my way of saying thank you this was our record views on the channel this year we had more views this year than we've ever had on the channel and it also helped us uh, hit 1 billion minutes watched on the channel and i just gotta say how amazingly crazy that is and i thank you for it so let's get into it let's talk about the gear i did a re-review of my fender princeton 68 reissue i had reviewed it years before but a lot of people kept asking do i still like it what do i think of it i love it in fact it's one of my favorite amplifiers it's my go-to for practice it's got a stock speaker but there is some modifications to it the one modification is i removed the drip tray off the frame felt like it rattled too much and was driving me crazy. And also the metal feet on it, I took those off and put tall rubber feet. And that was because I wanted to be able to sit on another cabinet in case I want to run it like a head into a 112 or 212 cabinet. I still absolutely love my Princeton. I think it's one of my favorite pedal platforms. And it just has a huge punchy sound at really low volumes that I love like I said, when I'm practicing. So the first guitar review I did was the Ibanez Axe Design Lab SML721. And that was an interesting video because Sweetwater reached out. They gave me like a choice of like two Ibanezes, but it was a very cool guitar. Now Sweetwater said they couldn't let me keep this one because I had to go back to Ibanez, but once it was in stock, they'd ship one out. And because of you guys, I'm sure <laughs> it hasn't been in stock since. I like the, uh, the Evo Gold frets on it. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of those. The next video was the Paul Reed Smith SE DGT. It definitely was the big guitar for the year. It really showed that PRS have really leveled up the SE line. I have to, uh, I have to tell you, I have some bias on this guitar. Um, one of the coolest things happened was, which was Dave Grissom was on a uh, interview and they asked him some questions about the guitar and he's like Phil McKnight yeah I mean he knows more about it than I do and he took the pickups out and was commenting on how he thought you know you could just tell by looking at them that they're now those SE guitars have very similar uh, metallurgy or whatever however they're putting them together so man that was like Woo, I was like, that was crazy. Plus it made me realize that sometimes, you know, some artists that have these guitars, when we do videos, they might be watching the video. And now that kind of adds to the, <laughs> adds to that. Great video, 165,000 views. Thank you guys so much for that. And, um, that was a great guitar. The next video I did was the Paul Reed Smith SE McCarty 594. Now those were both sent out at the same time to me and I spent the time with them and I did two separate videos. I felt like they needed their own separate video. Uh, interesting thing about the McCarty 594 is I think it's one of Paul Reed Smith's best guitars. It's a success story for your PRS. It's a, definitely a success. I've now owned, because that, the SE, I've had the S2 and I've had a Core and I don't own any of them. And it's really what I've learned is the neck is just a little too chunky for me and the scale is just a little too short. For me and so it becomes one of those things like i i love the guitar and the idea of it but when i play it i find it just doesn't get played and again thank you again for the video 170,000 views you guys are amazing then i did the supro amulet it's a great amplifier and i'm a huge fan of the supro comet and when they discontinued that i was like kind of a little bummed now interestingly enough i did not keep this amp but you gotta wait a little while and I'll explain why I did not keep that amp. Then the next video I did was the Badlands Redline, which is behind me right there. And if you don't know, Badlands is a brand that I am a co-owner of. There's four owners and I was invited to be involved in the process of bringing these guitars to market. The idea being it's really hard for players that covet those 80s era guitars to get them in good shape. And we thought, let's bring these fully detailed, fully painted guitars back. We thought if we could sell 10, that'd be really awesome right i mean it's a new company it's a new brand the guitars are very expensive because of the community that we have here we sold 50 in 72 hours 
The next one was reviewing a guitar I hated for years, and I thought that'd be a fun video. I actually have done this in the past with a pedal and an amp, and I thought, why not a guitar? Let's see what happens if I'm a different person. What guitar did I remember hating? And it was the Yngwie Malmsteen Scallop guitar. I just remember not liking that guitar, so I bought one, and uh, I actually like it now. <laughs> I still have it. The next video I did was the Tremolo Buddy. Now, I absolutely love it. The one critique in the video that you guys definitely stated in the comments was that you thought it was very expensive for what it is. So you know, and I talked to them and I said, you know, that's the feedback. Everybody's like, it's great, but it's a little expensive. And they said, look, we didn't buy a whole lot overseas, you know, having them made and we didn't negotiate the best we could. So we paid a lot for these things. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to get those prices down. So I agree with you. I think the price is a little high on the unit. I still love it. It's on my bench. So I suggest you check it out. Then I did a, a review of this, I'm gonna point to it right here, this Kiesel uh, 30 inch scale bass. And that's what I take everywhere now. And so if you see me out with a bass, it's gonna be that one. And of course at the home studio, it's gonna be the Warwick. The next one is a is a video I love, and it's a piece of gear that's awesome, which is the Amplified Nation Amplophonics and Gain. 2022, I did a review of a, a Amplified Nation amp, Dumble Style. I had Taylor Cox, the owner and designer on the podcast. The video did well. He reached out early you know, early 2023 and said, Hey, you want to do another uh, video and another amp? And I said, sure. And he's like, which one? And I said, well, I'm really interested in the Amplophonics and Gain since it's a, a, a basement circuit, you know, kind of that Marshall where Marshall came from goes into the Seldano higher gain territory. seems really cool. Has a clean channel, has reverb, seems like a great amp. I said, I'd love to do a video. Check that out. He says, cool. What, what do you want it? To, you know, how do you want it to look? Cause he does custom amps. And I said, I don't care. <laughs> so fast forward it shows up i'm opening out of the box my wife looks at it and she goes what is that i think that's what happens when you say you don't care what something looks like you know what's funny is now i absolutely love the way it looks i still have it it's a great amplifier when my friends come over and play the amps and stuff and plug in and we were playing and stuff they tell me every time it's the best sounding amp so the next guitar i did was the eart telly and of course i have an affection for these guitars because now i want to go over these hemispherical frets i want to show you how they do this because it is very work intensive what they do is they basically round off the edges of the fret especially the stainless steel fret before it even goes on the fretboard. Then they go ahead and remove a section of the blade underneath so they can drop it right into the fretboard and have a perfect fret end, as you can see right here. And you can buy them on Amazon, which means if you, you know, you can get a good return policy if you have any issues. They've really changed my perspective of what some of the mid-tier guitars quality should be at when you see what these guys can do for sub $300, $300 market. And uh, that video did well, really well, 131,000 views. But that guitar was just for the video, so it's not something I kept, which is a lot of product. It's just here, just so we can dissect it, look at it, and share it. The next video, so there's a company called Inya, and I would see them popping up everywhere on YouTube. And uh, they, of course, reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to send you this guitar. It's a, a travel size acoustic. It's made of carbon fiber. It has a built-in speaker system and uh, has effects, you know, because it has a built-in speaker, it has effects. And, uh, you know, it's $250. And uh, I was like, wow, that sounds really good. So they sent it. It was absolutely flawless. So flawless that it made me nervous. And I'm glad it made me nervous because of what how it ended. This feels like a stack deck, like a, you know, like a cherry-picked instrument. We ask them specifically not to do that, you know, companies not to do that, but you never know sometimes. It just was really good. And I was like, you know, here it is, it's like too good to be too true. It's like a perfect instrument at a perfect price. I thought about maybe not doing the video, but I kept picking it up and playing it. And I just loved it. Every time I played it, I was enjoying myself. So then it hit me, I go, why don't I just buy one? I'll just, I'll know, they're on Amazon. So we bought one on Amazon, it came straight to us from Amazon. Pulled out of the box, went through it. That's the one you see in the video. And yes, it did have some problems, but that guitar was about 80, 85% there. So it had a couple issues, not a lot of, lot of issues, but a couple issues. And when I put it in the video, um, I'm glad I did that because I think it set a, realist, a realistic expectation of the guitar. Like it's really good. To, in my opinion, still now, I still have the guitar. I love it. Um, and I have the second one. I have the one because I fixed it in the video. <laughs> so I just kept that one. Um, 
and I gave the first one away to a friend. But what's interesting is that video did a million views. So, you know, I'm really glad that sometimes, you know, I, I take the moment and I, I, I go, I think about this stuff because I think if I would have used the one, the first one they sent me, I think if it got a million views and the expectation was that they were you getting a perfect guitar, I wouldn't have felt good about that. So I like, you know, sometimes you have to make decisions like that. The next one was a D'Angelico semi hollow body guitar. That video, again, you guys knocked it out of the park. Half a million views. Thank you. I absolutely love the guitar, but I have an ES-35 and that's essentially what it was. And I was debating like, okay, if I keep this, you know, I'm going to get rid of the E-335 because I don't need two hollow body guitars. I just couldn't do it. I have a connection with the 335 I really like it. But I've always wanted a 339 I've tried a few. I've just never bonded with them. And so now I have a D'Angelico Mini, which is essentially a 339. And because I like their neck a little better than the Gibson and I like the guitar. So I do have a D'Angelico hollow body. It's just a smaller one. If you think I should do a video of that, put it in the comments down below. Dylan Talks Tone, who's another YouTube channel, makes pickups and he makes a variety of pickups. And he reached out and said, hey, would you be interested in reviewing a set of P90s? So he, he wound up some P90s sent them to me. I did a video. You guys, again, knocked it out of the park. 216,000 views, so almost quarter million views. Uh, it led to a, him selling a lot of pickups, which is really good for a small builder, right? It's always nice. And um, we did a, a deal. Um, he, he, I didn't get any like royalty from that or anything. I said, hey, we can do something for charity. So, so that's basically what would happen with that. Then I did a hollow body from Boya and Ziki. And the reason I did that video was obviously the hollow body that I did from D'Angelico did a half a million views. And that's kind of how my brain thinks on the channel is like that guitar was like, you know, it was $1,500, basically $1,300 to $1,500 and it did well. And so then what I want to do is I go, okay, let's look at another price point and see how that goes. So Boyanziki, uh, I did their hollow body, which is a 335. And of course that guitar is in the $300 range, sub $300 range. And, uh, and has, you know, uh, you know, stainless steel frets and all that stuff. So I reviewed that you guys, again, thank you for supporting the channel, the quarter million views on that. What's great about, uh, this is there was some issues with the guitar that I pointed out and you know, some companies <laughs> don't take that very well. Some companies don't care. And some companies like Boy and Ziki, uh, basically stepped up and said, we will do better uh, and we'll, we'll work on that. And so you got to love them for doing that. In fact, they sent another guitar. And there's a funny end to that story too. The next guitar I did was the USA made Fender Ultra. Now that video was really interesting because in the video I said, hey, this guitar was sent to a, another YouTube channel, which was bigger than my channel. And it has some issues. Uh, if you guys know the issues, the issues had a horrible fret sprout, not fret sprout, but horrible fret sprout. Some of the worst I've seen. Some of the comments in the video were like, you live in Arizona, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I live in a very dry climate and the fret sprout would be very bad. Now, here's what's interesting. I should have said this in the video. This is one of those things when I saw the comments in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I should have probably said it. I didn't say the channel, I should have said the state. So, you know, that guitar was shipped to Dovey Doss. Dovey Doss, the channel that has over a million subscribers. And so you understand, that was in Florida that happened. They shipped it California to Florida. He had the issues. He reached out to me and said, Phil, can I ship you this guitar and have you just address it and fix it? And I said, sure. And then I decided to do a video. So that's why I did the video. And so went to the people who said, hey, the fret sprout is normal because you live in Arizona. And I, you would be kind of right, except for it actually happened in Florida. That's the way the guitar was, when the, it arrived to me, it was in the condition that you see it in the video and that happened in Florida. <laughs> so, uh, and thank you again for supporting that video, uh, 500,000, half a million views. So you guys are awesome as always. The next one was a Squire and it, this was because a lot of people were saying in the comments of these about uh, Boy and Ziki and Enya videos, just buy a Squire, just buy an Epiphone. And a lot of times when you do these off-brand imported guitars, a lot of the comments will say, don't buy these, buy a Squire and Epiphone because they're the name brand instruments. I don't disagree with that or or have any strong opinions either way on that. Just I felt like, okay, well, let's let's present that too. So what I did on this one was, I reached out to my patrons again and said, hey, is anyone willing to buy a Squire Strat and have it sent to me? Yeah, and so they bought it at Sweetwater, had it sent to me. I did the deep dive on it. And then as a, um, a thank you to the patron, I 
uh, put some locking keys on it and made him a special set of hand wound pickups. Uh, I did some special single coils with a special wiring for him and sent it to him as a thank you. And so uh, that was to Robert. Thank you, Robert, for sending the guitar. Then I did a one watt made in USA amplifier from D Kowalski amplifiers. D Kowalski is David Kowalski. And if you have one of these amplifiers, David made your amplifier. There is no assembly line. There is no rows of employees. There's just a artisan building hand wired tube amps. I love artisan type products. Um, what I mean by that is sometimes people refer to things as boutique. This is a boutique pedal. This is a boutique amp. This is a boutique guitar. To me, I'm like, th those words just get thrown around and sometimes they don't even mean anything. I've seen companies mass produce inexpensive product and put boutique on it. <laughs> they actually call it that. The term I like is artisan, which means a person made this, one person made this product. What's great about guys like him is he told me that, you know, he worked at Home Depot and he started working on amplifiers and he just loves the idea of not working in a Home Depot. He, he lives in Texas in a small town and, you know, his dream is he can do something like this. So he builds the amps and that's how he prices them. He prices them based on like, what does he got to make to not have to go back to work at Home Depot? That's why I did the video. And like I said, anytime I can showcase a smaller builder and, uh, and, and do something fun. And like I said, I love artisan product, but I also love when that crafted piece of gear by one person isn't an insane amount of money, of course, right? And yes, I still have it. And yes, I still use this beautiful little one watt amp. Then I did another Boya and Zinke. And sadly enough, this one was worse. <laughs> this one had way more problems than the first one. You know, you gotta understand these companies don't get to preview the videos. So it's a punch in the gut when it lands and you know, people are watching it and this is the first they're seeing that, you know, I'm I'm pointing out problems. And they responded with, they apologized for the, the quality issues. They said they'll focus even more because they're a new company on the things they pointed out. They said, we've lowered the price to adjust for the problem. So, you know, because obviously in the video I show you guys how to address a couple things. Basically, they said when the, they make the next batch, they'll improve the quality. And uh, you guys, again, thank you for supporting that video with a quarter million views. Then I did an Orangewood acoustic, and I really like Orangewood. I like the guys at Orangewood. Since most people are buying acoustics on the internet, let's go ahead and have them built overseas and then have them set up here in the States before they get delivered and they really go into detail on trying to make them set up. You can actually go to their Instagram and see all, they show you know constantly videos of them working on the guitars, what they're doing, what they see, how they fix it, and how they get the guitars to be more playable. I have a bunch of high-end acoustics and my only affordable acoustic that I play is an Orangewood. So a question you might have is, did I keep that acoustic? I did not, but this is the orange wood that I use, which is the Echo ML. It's an all mahogany acoustic guitar that I really, really enjoy. And this is my daily player acoustic guitar. The next one I did was this Schecter that I'm gonna point out to me uh, behind me, the Schecter. I'm always telling everybody how much I love Schecter guitars. Schecter has sent some guitars in the past. Those videos I thought did really well, but then for some reason, you know, it just, you know, sometimes those relationships die off. They, the person leaves, a new person comes. I'm not sure really happens. I reached out to them and I didn't get any responses. And, uh, you know, people were like, hey, you know, you say you like Schecter's. And I'm like, yeah, so I bought that Schecter for this, the purpose of, hey, let's do a video. Then talking about a guitar that I think is as good as, because I'm constantly telling people I think a Schecter is as good quality wise as guitars that are twice and three times the price. So the question is, you know, well, I can say that, but you know, will I do that? And so I bought that Schecter. So as you can see, I love it. I kept it, but I did change something. Uh, it came with Schecter Main USA pickups. I liked the one in the neck. I did not like the bridge. So I went ahead and put a Seymour Duncan JB because I like that pickup, especially for the kind of music I'm playing with this kind of guitar. And so I still love this guitar. It's amazing. And you guys supported that video, 150,000 views. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so then the next video, was the, it's uh, behind my head. It was the Rickenbacker 12 string. And that came from a podcast question when somebody asked me, how come YouTubers don't review Rickenbackers? My answer in the podcast was, because they don't send them to channels. So again, I was like, you know, well, you guys are asking about them. And I went out there and looked and you were absolutely right. There are almost no videos on Rick and Becker guitars, comparatively speaking. I mean, considering their popularity, if you look at their popularity versus content creation, it's almost like it's, you know, sometimes it's way out of whack. I mean, I decided to make the video and you guys, again, were right. A quarter million views on that video. And where do I stand on it? I still don't like it. 
<laughs> I love the way it sounds. I said this in the video. I love the way it sounds. I'm just not into the neck. And I said I would continue to use it, which is what I've done. Uh, I've had it since, uh, well, I've had it for since the beginning of this year, but the video was in June. And I'm still not getting used to the neck. I think where I'm going to end with this guitar is I think I'm going to get myself a Dan Electro uh, 12 string. And if I, if I can, if I, I, I'm, I'm good with that and I like it, then that will just go, it'll just go to the next guitar player and they can enjoy it. Then I did the Miles Kennedy Paul Reed Smith guitar. And I also did the NF53. I'm a massively huge Alter Bridge fan. Um, I, I like, I love Tremonti. I love Miles Kennedy. And so of course I thought for sure I was buying a Miles Kennedy guitar because I was like, I love PRS. I love Miles Kennedy. It just didn't do anything for me. It's not a bad guitar. It just did not grab me. Neither did the NF53. I just couldn't get there with it. I was like, it was, it's, it's okay. And then the next video I did was the Hollow Flash Badlands guitar. That was our second model brought to the market. We had delivered all the red lines, and so it was time to release the second one. We could not have predicted in a million years. We were considering, like, should we do 50 models? Should we go back to two of the 10 we were originally thinking for the first one? So we decided to do a 100 run, which is 50 you know, and we make 50 and then when the 50 is done, then we make another 50. And um, we sold out in 24 hours, which was uh, just mind blowing. So again, that was just a, a very surreal experience. But the crazier thing that happened later was the hollow flash is inspired off of the hollow flash Kramer guitars they did back in the 80s that we thought that finish was great. No one had really been doing any hollow flash guitars in a, in a production scale. We reached out to hollow flash. Hollow flash is like, hey, we can help you because we've improved the process since the 80s. And uh, we're like, all right. And so long story short, we put out the guitars. And then later, Kramer Guitars themselves put out a guitar and basically made a, a public statement that they... We were trying to get the actual um, holographic paint okay. from the 80s. <laughs> and uh, apparently, uh, it, A, hard to find. So, uh, wow. Right. Wow. So we did we did something that that uh, that feels pretty crazy that we actually pulled that off. We did something really cool. The next video I did was Fox three guitars. <laughs> This is a very small builder. They're fighter pilots and they like making guitars that are in the shape of fighter planes that are all have all these custom graphics painted on them. We worked out a deal with them to where they would donate $1,000 to Guitars for Vets. The next video I did was probably the most long awaited video I've ever done on YouTube, which was the Evertune Bridge. This has been going on for almost three years on the podcast. People are bringing it up Evertune. Will I do an Evertune video? Will I? So I was able to work out a deal with Evertune to where they shipped me a Gibson Les Paul because I told them, I said, look, wouldn't it be great we take a guitar who's synonymous with not staying in tune and take your bridge which is apparently synonymous with always staying in tune and we put them together and what happens that to me is interesting and more importantly what wh does it make the guitar worse or better i was uh, really impressed with the evertune system if that's your focus if you want a guitar that's just going to stay in tune i definitely think you should consider it it's really cool and uh and you guys obviously uh supported the video. It's got 85,000 views. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that so much. Then I did Amplify Nation, the Still String Singer. You know, that's a classic, you know, Dumble style amplifier. Here's the funny thing reflective about that. I did the video of that amp and it's, it's notoriously known for its amazing clean tone. <laughs> It's really known for this big, over-the-top, amazing clean. Here's what I will tell you. It's an extremely expensive amp, and it sounds amazing, but it is almost will ruin you <laughs> for clean amps. Um, I am a huge, huge Fender Clean fan. This amp is so good. It sounds so full and so dynamic that you feel like you're when you plug in other amps, they're lacking now. And yes, I still have it and it is definitely the go-to. I'm now running it through a 212 cabinet and uh, that with some pedals is just one of the best sounds I've ever heard. The next video I did was my signature Kiesel guitar, which is the Delos, but I had them do it in a special copper penny metallic and I had a special wiring on it. One of my favorite guitars and I that and my S Gibson SG is the two guitars I play all the time. And then Kiesel reached out and said, you know, people are buying this guitar. They're calling us and they're saying, hey, I want a Delos in this color with this wiring. 
and we're selling it to them, but they go, you know, if we make a skew for it, they can do it online. They can just go online and buy it. More importantly, it would drop the price. It wouldn't be so much custom charges. It would just be something they can click. My name is not on the guitar. It's on the skew. <laughs> okay. Um, that was one of the things we discussed. I didn't want my name on the guitar. I didn't want it to say my name anywhere. And obviously, if you go to Kiesel's website, you'll see the Phil McKnight PM Delos. But essentially, it's just a Delos with some of the specifications that I like. And uh, I think you guys should look at it as exactly that. You can customize it your own way. Then Supro, and this ties into the Supro amp where I said I would tell you what happened with the am amulet and why I didn't keep it. So Supro reached out and they said, hey, would you be interested in doing a video of our new amplifier? It's called the Delegate. It's a, it's a handmade, USA made ex amp. It's very expensive, it's $3,300. Of course I'm interested. They would ship it to me and I would get to keep it. And so I had a very, this is why this is important to say. So, I mean, it's a $3,000 amp. I said, look, I really like the amulet. Okay. But the problem I'm having is, is that for function for me to make content, to do what I do, I'm better suited with heads than combos. The combos take up too much room. The heads work really good for me because I can... Uh, I have cabinets all set up and mic'd up and ready to go to make videos. And so I just put the head into the cabinet and then I just, you know, it's mic'd, it's ready to go and I start making content. So I find myself using the heads more. Since I like the amulet, which is the comment, which is kind of like the black magic, I'd like to get a black magic head with reverb. I would use it all the time. So they sent me the delegate and they basically like, if you like the delegate, you can keep it. I got the delegate. It was amazing. Better than the black magic head, but better is only going to be helpful if it's practical too. And practicality for me was the black magic. So now I have a super black magic head. Then the next video I did was the Strandberg true temperament frets. I was like, I'm not going to be interested in this at all. <laughs> and as I said in the video, I had some ups and downs with it. Ultimately though, deciding that I absolutely love it. And, um, and, uh, so basically I bought it. <laughs> So that's why it's there. It's funny, I put it here for the video, but so you know, it's normally right next to me and it's one I'm picking up all the time and playing when I'm editing and rendering and doing stuff. I want a guitar next to me to play, you know, and that's the one I grab and work on and play. Then I did this Spark Go. I was flying somewhere and I was like, okay, uh, space is limited. So I bought a Spark Go. I absolutely love it. <laughs> It's uh, I it's solved a problem because I like having a Bluetooth speaker, you know, listening to music, and so it's a Bluetooth speaker. It's a little guitar amp. Some players don't like it because they, you know, it's look, it's not gonna blow you away. It's a little teeny teeny amp. It's like this big, and it's just gonna sound. It's enough to practice with, you know, if you just want some sounds. The next I did the Fishman Loudbox Micro. So I have the Loudbox Mini, which I absolutely love. So when they said, hey, we're making a smaller version of that, and I thought the Mini was small. I love that amp. I've owned a ton of acoustic amplifiers. There's a lot of great things I can say about all of them. Uh, it's not that the Loudbox is the best one. It's just the one I prefer. And... It's amazing, and I highly recommend you check out the Micro and the Mini, and they're the exact same amp and almost in every way, and I say almost like 99% there to the exact amp. It's just how loud you want the thing to be. So now that we've covered some of my favorite videos of the year and what I thought of those particular products, whether that I liked them or not, kept them or didn't, let's talk about the most innovative products this year. There's three to come to mind. I'm going to share them with you. First is the Spark Go. I took it on vacation and I've been using it ever since I got back. It's one of those products where it's like money well spent. It's given back dividends. The next product actually is in that kind of vein. It's the Black Mountain Asteroid Pick that gives you three totally different types of pick, not just thicknesses, but different materials. And I found myself the same thing. I always have it in my pocket. It's kind of like, it's not my favorite pick. It's just a pick that I like to have a around it's hard to lose and it works for a ton of different situations when it comes to guitars that are innovative this year the first one i think of actually interesting enough is the kiesel a2 it came out this year and if you guys watched my live unboxing slash deep dive of the guitar there's a couple cool things i love the design of it and i personally love the output jack being in the back but what's great is a couple customers out there didn't like it including uh stay metal ray which is a youtube channel he pointed out that you know he didn't enjoy it there so they modified it so now you the output jack at the bottom 
or the back. I'd like to point out mine's not modified because like I said, I don't have the issue and it's just not worth it to me to have the modification done. For when I think of the best guitar this year, like just the overall guitar that kind of stole the show of the internet, it's gotta be Dave Grissom. I think it's one of those guitars that just punches way above its weight. It did a great job. It sounded great. It felt great. It's just a fantastic instrument. So now let's finish off with some honorable mentions of gear that I thought was pretty cool that I checked out. So first I want to say the new Paul Reed Smith SECE. It's a very cool guitar. So I did that, the Swamp Ash Special, and of course their new quilted uh, Custom 24. We gave away the Swamp Ash Special and what was really nice was Paul Reed Smith guitars sent me out a Swamp Ash Special right there. Very cool. I would definitely say the SEs were uh, killing it this year for new cool guitars. Another honorable mention goes out to Laney Amps. They did the new Solid State series of amplifiers that I thought was really cool. My only critique was I wish the smaller one had reverb. I think that would have been a big plus. Also, the exciting part of the year was I got to do the Cub. So it was really nice to check out Laney. And I'm hoping in 2024 to check out even more Laney Amps. It was a crazy year. Like I said, record year for us. And that's you guys. And that's why, again, I want to end with, don't forget, you can enter to win a set of Blackstock pickups. These are hand-wound by me. No one will contact you through social media. I'm the one that actually responds to you via email. And you can verify that. I even give you my cell phone number and all that stuff. As always, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.